Okay, good morning and welcome everyone. We uh, move on to our next session here uh, as we discuss the apostolic ministry uh, a little more deeper. I want to request one of you on the call to lead in prayer before we go ahead. Uh, just leave it open. Thank you. Okay, Adanita Lupega. Let's pray. Yes. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time, Lord, of this lecture. Father, we thank you for the gift of life that you've given us. Father, we thank you for the pastor. We also still thank you for the lesson we are going to learn. Father, we also pray hard that every, each one of us who has not yet joined comes in on time and he joins so that the lesson can go as expected, not because of our power almighty, but because of your grace and mercy. I do pray in the name of the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lupika. So we talked about the features of an apostle up until now, but today we are going to talk a little bit about the apostolic ministry, um, ministry that is part of the church and apostolic ministry that makes an impact in the city, um, the nation. And as I said earlier, we're also going to look at some of the pitfalls of uh, the apostolic ministry. So this is what I'm going to cover today. So um, in the church, you know, how, how what can we expect through this anointing? We can expect as compared to the normal structure of the church um, that you know we are all familiar with, uh, that is, you usually have a pastor leading the church. But if you look at the church of Antioch in the book of Acts, uh, Acts chapter 11, you see that the leadership team was uh, comprised of uh, teachers, it was comprised of prophets. So you see a pattern of Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, what we read there about God gave gifts to the church, the apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the pastor, the evangelist. So there is a ministry team that serves the church. Uh, and that is what we can expect, a multifunctional team of ministers taking up their ministry offices in order to uh, raise up or equip the believers. So that is what an apostolic um, governance in a church looks like. So uh, usually what happens is that a pastor may have a dual calling, uh, meaning he can be a founding senior pastor. And as he grows the ministry and the church, we would begin to notice the features of an apostle, you know, in the function of an apostle, all, all the things that we've discussed so far, that could emerge from their life. And thereby, they are a pastor, yes, but then we eventually begin to realize that they are an apostle. So in the church, the, the apostolic ministry looks like this. Now, uh, we must understand that there is a lot of difference between the pastoral ministry and the apostolic ministry. Okay, w What I mean by that is we demarcate the two offices. Uh, definitely both in, will involve some basic common things like caring for the people, establishing the people in the word of God, the work of the spirit, so on and so forth. But we have seen how when it comes to the ap apostle, the apostolic, new revelations, right? So that that's something we, we've learned. Uh, greater depths in the word deeper insights, extending the kingdom of God into new territories and 
functioning in the supernatural at a completely different level. So uh, we will see that the pastor is also doing these things, but the apostle uh, in, in a heightened manner, you know, so to speak. So that is how we can actually make out the difference between the role of a pastor and an apostle. So about the pastoral leadership, I won't get into it because we've had uh, courses where we have studied books such as First um, and Second Timothy. We've studied Titus. So there you have the requirements for a pastor, the functions of a pastor, so on and so forth. So uh, the point we're making is the pastoral ministry office looks quite different from the apostolic ministry office. So in the local church, what will happen as the uh, apostolic emerges, we will find that the apostolic leader, they serve more like a father to many leaders, and they will raise up leaders. Okay, So there'll be a strong leadership. There'll be the emergence of a uh, you know, like a governmental uh, a body which which takes care of of the church and you know the standards of the church. So in an apostolic setup, that's what we can expect. So a very strong set of leaders with a proper uh, governmental structure. Then we can expect that the doctrine will be established in a strong way because that's part of the apostolic ministry. Order in the church. When we say order, uh, I just want to uh, remind us there is an APC publication called as Divine Order. So Divine Order in the citywide church. So it's more specific to that, but still, when uh, we we uh, you know go over that, we see that there is a certain expectation that God has as far as our relationships are concerned, you know, as ministers of God, as a people in the church, the way we must relate to our leadership and all. So that is what we call as order. So the apostolic will establish good order within the church and develop a new wineskin, which means that the old order will be replaced with uh, a revived, refreshed new order or structure in the local church, which will strengthen the church. You know, sometimes we've heard terms such as uh, uh, a revival of churches. So this is what it means, just strengthening the church and giving it good order. Then uh, because we are talking about an apostolic church, we can also e expect pioneering activities so a regular church as such you know which has only a pastoral leader will grow will thrive which it may have a couple of branches as we've discussed already and today we have the trend of multi-site churches in the same city um yeah you know satellite churches so those things can happen but then an uh, apostolic work is one where new ministries will get pioneered Okay, so we are talking new ministries, we're talking new territories, we're talking breaking new ground. So it's 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 uh, swiftly and quite extensively, uh, you know, impacting new arenas. So that is how the apostolic church looks like. How can we see this church be established? Do we uh, notice that there are stages that any church could take, uh, like? the normal establishing of a church we'll find you know territorial entrance meaning the church is established in a particular place and then uh, they they uh, they try to find their way find their grips right have a foundation in that place so we call that as a pioneering stage so where you know uh, the the um, blueprint you receive from God and you set it up. Okay, overall, this is what this is what uh, we believe. This is what our structure is going to look like. So it's a stage where the pastor uh, or the apostle is a visionary and he is establishing the vision for the church and trying to make it come alive. That's the pioneering stage. And then once that uh, groundwork is done, you just have to build, isn't it? Once the foundation is done and the structure is uh, sort of in place, then you just build the height and you know the the uh, 
internal structures of a building. So in the same way, just the building phase, where on the basics, on the blueprint, the uh, church is built up in a strong way. Now, after this, till this stage, for any church would have these stages. But an apostolic church, you know, going from here, the next stage, the fourth stage is what is very important. We say that an apostolic church after this building phase will become a governing voice, meaning all that we talked about, you know, talking about the standards and doctrine, talking about the standards and leadership, talking about the standards and leadership structure, talking about different things. It becomes a voice, meaning what is happening in the church starts to affect people around, churches around, you know, the communities, the city, the nation. So they become a governing voice to the surroundings. And in the apostolic church, you know, it goes further. Uh, and what happens after that is that this church, this apostolic church, which is now heard, you know, whatever they are doing, it's ministering to uh, the body of Christ, they become an apostolic base. So apostolic base simply means that the church is now so strong and established. There are leaders rising up. There are ministries rising up. New territories are being impacted. And you will find that people from here keep going out. It's like you know sending out Paul and Barnabas. It's like sending out uh, uh, Silas. They were all from the church of Antioch, but what did they do? They went all over the place, did their ministry, came back to their base, Antioch. They reported things to their brothers and sisters. So the, uh, the church as such now has become an apostolic base, which is sending out a lot of, you know, whatever you want to call them, kingdom carriers, leaders, uh, ministers of God. So it's constantly <clears throat> sending out you know all these people and uh, they are still connected to the life of the church the church becomes uh, a support it could be a support uh, financially it could be a support um uh, you know uh, emotionally spiritually continuing to provide governance leadership to these leaders who are traveling all over the place so that is the apostolic base stage so we've seen now and how a normal church looks a pastoral kind of a church an apostolic church and an apostolic church goes through all these stages eventually the distinctive phases of an apostolic church which we can note are one becoming a governing voice okay uh so you know you have a say basically in in what's going on in in the body of christ and becoming an apostolic base meaning a sending out base from where a lot of people are you know developed as leaders they go out and they make an impact so that's what an apostolic church looks like please feel free to stop me at any point i'm just trying to go ahead and cover the rest of the portion so that I'm, I'm trying to wrap it up in one hour's time. Uh, but yeah, if you have questions, then uh, absolutely fine. We can always spill over to the next hour. Okay, so now coming to apostolic ministry and the city, um, how would apostolic ministry affect the city? Well, we will find some of the features that we talked about earlier of the present time trends of the apostolic ministry. So when apostolic ministry uh, takes over, we will begin to see a unity among churches and ministries in the city. Okay? Uh, so they could be doing completely different things. But when it comes to the cause of Christ, you know, they work together, they come together. Now it's true that every church has its own calling, uh, it has its own vision. But when we look at the core of things, when we are born again, when we are in Christ Jesus, right? And some of the core doctrines we believe in the Trinity, some of those core things are the same. And the peripherals, maybe we do church differently. Uh, you know, our church format is different compared to some others. So the peripheral things could be different. But what happens when uh, there is the apostolic move of God? 
in in a city we would find that people are willing to let go of those peripheral differences and still stand together right in the face of persecution in the face of opposition so this is something that happens you know in the city wide church unity among churches and ministers of god and in this city we would also notice just the way we said in an apostolic church a pastor yes a pastor is a shepherd but he grows into a father why are we calling him a father because he is nurturing new leaders under him the same way when there is an apostolic move in a city we will find that there are fathers in the body of christ which which also means that they will raise up leaders in the body of christ so they may all be from different churches but people are being fathered in the things of the kingdom so that is the apostolic move over a city this kind of leadership over a city will then lead to city transformation city transformation is a term we use for a uh, change in the spiritual atmosphere the spiritual standards of a city okay the impact is large larger than just a local church so it's impacting the entire city and city transformation is not just restricted to spiritual changes where people come to know the lord jesus and they come to follow him but it also will impact you know social um uh, the society at large the priorities uh, we talk about you know uh, overcoming crimes in a city uh, infrastructure different things so it, it will definitely impact everything that uh, has got to do with the city life so the apostolic will accomplish these things for us then moving on in the apostolic anointing we find that uh, the body of christ because it's now growing in unity and becoming stronger uh, in a united way the this will be this can now represent the body of christ to the local government to the civic authorities so remember governing voice isn't it we said that governing voice that's a crucial part of the apostolic move over the body of christ so we have a voice now now that we stand together we are able to speak it to uh, things that are going on in the city maybe justice issues we are able to speak and say hey you know it should be like this or um, uh, equity among people why are, why is there discrimination different things we can actually stand up and have a voice and the government also you know is, is able to take uh, heed to that then we can because of that because now that uh, you know the church is strong and has a voice it can affect the policies that um, the government uh, formulates um we could have we could see something like a movement at a grassroots level and at uh, higher levels as well and overall you know there'll be city transformation so that's how it's going to impact the city now if we look at the impact on the nation whatever i shared just now take it to the next level okay so we are talking uh, fathers rising up in the nation in the spiritual uh you know in the body of christ that there, there are fathers to ministers in the nation okay so some such strong apostolic leaders we can see we can see the birthing of new movements we can see new strategies we can see a, a strong voice right in the nation the church having a strong voice in the nation when i say church i i'm not referring to Uh, you know any local church i'm just saying the spiritual body of christ now becomes very influential then uh, advancing the gospel into new territories um, and uh, impacting national government authorities uh, for the sake of the kingdom and strengthening you know churches networks across uh, the nation so basically the impact is very huge it's large by an apostolic ministry so uh, any questions so far yes uh, 
Divya is asking, ma'am, can you cite an example of an apostolic ministry? So I will come to that, Divya. I do have a few uh, you know, names that I can share. Uh, but I, I'll come to it a little later. Is that OK? Sure, sure, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. OK, uh, right. So we were talking about you know how an apostolic church looks, then uh, apostolic over a city and a nation. So how do we nurture, you know, this kind of a church, or this kind of um, how do we make place for such movements in the city and nation? First is to understand what the apostolic ministry means. Now we are trying to define it biblically, you know, not the other way around. Sometimes we look at the experience and then we try to define what it is, but it doesn't work that way. The right way for us to understand what this office of the prophet or the apostolic ministry means is to go from the Bible, right? So that is why we looked at, we studied thoroughly. You know, what does the apostolic ministry look like in the Bible? The 12 apostles of the Lamb, what did they do? The founding apostles, what did they do? You know, what else do we see there? Has it stopped the apostolic ministry? Obviously, according to the key scriptures there, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13, we see it hasn't stopped. God is continuing to release this anointing. He's continuing to call people into the office of a prophet. Thereby, yes, we will see apostles rising up and apostolic ministries rising up. So going by the word of God, and then you look at the lives of people like Peter and Paul and John and James, you know, you, you study a lot more. And so what we're saying is, oh, okay, this is how it looks. Yes, in our times, the, uh, the outworking may look slightly different from what it did in the first century, but at least we have an idea of the, the kind of pattern that we can expect. So understanding this is very important for developing uh, the apostolic, okay, imparting the apostolic among the people because one of the main challenges is there is no clear understanding. People are confused about the apostolic. So teach, right? Teach about what the apostolic ministry is all about, an apostle is all about. Um, and when they say good models, of apostolic ministry and apostolic churches, uh, even then, you know, they will have a better understanding. Then, leadership uh, to encourage apostolic leadership. You know, when when a uh, a pastor, let's say, they are in the call of an apostle, and then eventually you see them uh, branching out, starting new ministries. Somewhere for the people, it's like. What has happened to this pastor? He no longer loves us. You know, he no longer cares about the church. But maybe that's not what it is. Maybe once they everything is established and you know, people are still being taken care of, there are systems in place, you find that the leadership is now moving to new things, right? Uh, eventually growing into new territories. So we must allow that freedom. This is the emergence of a more apostolic kind of leadership. So when we give freedom for leaders to transition you know, from that pastoral to the apostolic leader uh, positions, we can see more happening. But when we put a limitation there, uh, it's difficult. right? Uh, and even respecting apostolic leaders, because it's possible that because people are so familiar with the pastoral leader, they're not able to accept an apostolic leader. Uh, and, you know, that causes a lot of uh, difficulty. Uh, an apostolic leader, as we have learned earlier, can be uh, very brave to make changes, can be very brave to maybe stop ministries that are not working. You know, they can be very brave to start off, uh, you know, some audacious, ambitious uh, projects. Uh, right, and you see that they have the grace to do it also, complete it. So when you look at things like this, it's not easy for people to tag along and work together with such people. It can be quite stressful <laughs> at times, but uh, you see, that's a feature of apostolic leadership, and that's how apostolic leadership looks. Uh, so for the people, 
they're alarmed. Oh, I thought, you know, this is a pastor. They're coming up with all these new things. Just focus on your church. You know, so when there is resistance to change, when there is, uh, you know, uh, a lack of support, it's very hard. People don't understand an apostolic leader. People don't respect an apostolic leader. And uh, that would, would cause a slowing down of things. OK, so understanding apostolic leadership, how they are so strong and they carry the governmental authority, that's also key for us to uh, cause, develop the apostolic then uh, a sense more understanding about fathering right so fathering uh, the the leaders under you now i don't know if it was your class or which class but we talked about fathering right um uh, in today's uh, in, in this current season fathering it's a beautiful subject but we also know about the excesses of the subject where um, you know somewhere people have been taught that if you don't have a father you know if you don't have somebody above you i mean i've heard so many teachings right uh, where uh, they say there's always a there's always a moses if there's a joshua there's always an elijah if there's a uh, elisha well it's true you know we mentoring and training equipping getting equipped by other leaders uh working with the uh, leaders and all it's it's good but you see at the end of the day we are first accountable to god and you know not we we don't need any other mediator that's what the bible says there's one mediator the lord jesus christ so my relationship with god is directly established i don't need a middleman i don't need a so-called father to be between me and god and then you know be that mediator it's not that definition of a father is not biblical but a father, somebody like Paul, who just uh, journeys with you uh, and, and sort of nudges you into the call of God for your life, uh, holds you accountable, yes, but not like, you know, you owe your life to me. You're not like that. So that we need to get a biblical understanding of, of fathers. And uh, I, um, there is a sermon series in uh, the APC website, on the APC website, where uh, spiritual fathers right what does it really mean what is the biblical understanding of that and what are some of the abuses that we see in the church today now that would be a, a good set of sermons for us to listen to uh, and understand uh, so while we talk about the apostolic and the growing sense of fathers in the body of christ we should also be alert about the abuses of that concept so just um, you know a, a word of caution for all of us um so yes uh all believers can be apostolic i think i made that statement last time we cannot be apostles because apostle is a calling and uh, as we again go back to the key passage ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 through 13 some are called some are called as apostles and that is up to god he decides he chooses so i can't choose you know if, if i like the uh, position of an apostle i need the grace to be an apostle but that only comes from god so it's only when we are called that we can be in the office of an apostle but here's the beautiful thing you know jesus told his disciples john 20 21 he said as as a father sent me i send you so jesus sent the disciples so they are the ambassadors now who what is an apostle sent one isn't it so we are sent to establish the kingdom of god and today every believer you know from scripture because that a great commission is for every believer we are all sent ones so we cannot be an apostle all of us cannot be an apostle but all of us can be apostolic every believer can be apostolic so what does it mean you know we are the ambassadors for christ we carry the fragrance of christ where we go we carry the power of god where we go you know we carry the standards of god where we go and not that we just carry it but you see we Im impact the place that we are at we impact it for the glory of god we cause changes to take place we cause you know see open doors uh, we become a voice 
skill. So that is what. So then we begin to see that there are a lot of new ministries emerging today, some unusual ones. And we've been talking about how we're not just saying, you know, geographically new territory, but it can be um, something to do in the world of business. It could be something to do in the world of arts. It could be something to do, uh, you know, in, in the world of government or education, the seven mountains of influence. It could be anywhere. But the apostolic will cause a believer to um, get into an arena and shine for God. And that's what we are saying. We're saying churches can be apostolic. Believers can be apostolic. Every believer can be apostolic. Okay, You don't have to be an apostle to uh, uh, take the kingdom wherever you're going. You can be apostolic and take the kingdom where you're going. So uh, that is how we, we see um, the apostolic in the life of a believer. So even in the workplace, because you know generally we all have vocations. So even in the workplace, we can be apostolic and manifest uh, the entire nature right of pioneering things building governing by the standards of god so on and so forth um yes Right. Uh, there is a little bit of an overlap as you go over your notes. So I'm not going to you know, repeat things that I have shared. So when the church becomes apostolic okay, or grows into being apostolic, so then it'll have all those stages that we talked about. You know, you go to a, uh, a place, territorial entrance, um, and then you pioneer. Uh, you know, then you you build from there. Once you pioneered, you build, and then you become a governing voice. Then you become an apostolic base. So, in this process, there will be uh, fathers developed. There will be leaders developed. There will be new ministries, right? There will be movements at the grassroots level, and you know, a doctrine will be established. We will find new moves of the spirit. So, so many things are happening as the church is established as an apostolic church. Now, what are some of the pitfalls? What are some things that we should be careful about? So here are the challenges. In an apostolic setup, Okay, because things are intense, because things are forward looking, because there is a very strong leadership and you know there's a lot of focus in the way things are done, it is possible for people to feel uncared for okay now not that the leaders don't care but if there are no proper systems in place see because the leadership is always thinking new territory pioneer new things right excellence so they're looking at all of those things and they're they are also going out go to the uh, you know other cities go to the other nations what about the local church what about the needs of the people in the local church as long as we have some systems, let's say you know, there is a member care, a very strong member care system where if there are needs, people are ministered to, life groups, uh, you know, you're familiar with all these terms. So then what happens? In a way, automatically things are taken care of. But if there are the process is not set in the local church, then because there's so much action happening, you know, people may feel that, oh, these leaders don't care. They're only thinking about, you know, reaching the next nation. What about us? You know, we they don't they don't care if anything is happening in our lives or not. So that's a challenge. You know, if the, if we see God establishing an apostolic church, uh, which he is, uh, by the way, a lot of ch churches and networks are rising up. Mm, this aspect has to be taken care of that people feel loved and belonged then people don't understand the apostolic nature you know, we've already talked about that so a lot of changes we they might think why are we stretching ourselves so much you know why are we putting money into these things why why are our leaders being sent into new things why is the position of role of this leader being shifted to so, you know, change is as it is, it's not easy. But when there's a lot of change uh, in an apostolic setup, I think people can get stressed unless they understand what the apostolic anointing and the mandate is all about. So these are some areas where one should be careful. Um, and then, yeah, if, if these things are taken care of, uh, you would find that, you know, people are actually comfortable. Now, uh, 
issues concerning the apostolic ministry, uh, these are also pitfalls. So we said that apostles are very strong, isn't it? They're very focused. So some of the dangers are that their governmental authority can be abused. So now, uh, you know, Divya was asking, what are some examples? So if when we go back to, uh, you know, um, I'll just tell you the date. When was this? Nineteen, uh, yeah, somewhere nineteen sixties, nineteen seventies, nineteen hundreds. There was a movement uh, which was started by very famous, um, you know, people uh, like Derek Prince, Charles Charles Simpson, um, Don Basham, Bob. Uh, Mumford and all. So they started something known as the shepherding movement, where um, they basically, you know, this whole concept of fathers and shepherds over God's people and nurture them, raise up more leaders. So it was the intentions were really good. So all that started, right? But eventually, uh, the reality is that because this leadership was so strong and uh, um, the teaching was so strong, it spread across nations this whole concept of shepherding you know that is where you get this this concept of uh, many of you would have heard covering you should have a covering if you're a believer you need a covering of a leader over your life if you don't have a covering then something is wrong well it started from here okay uh, from this movement the shepherding movement but the problem which they ran into is you know they came up with all kinds of concepts like covenant relationships where you don't actually have biblical basis for these things. Yes, the Bible does say that pastors are shepherds, overseers of the church, but then the extent to which the shepherding movement was taken was bad because they were telling people which job to take. They were telling people whom to marry. They were telling people whether they can shift their house or not. They were telling people if they should take medicines or not. So basically what happened is the good intentions turned into an abuse and people were being controlled with the term submission you know you must submit to your leader and part of submission was paying tithes to your leader so you need to give money to your leader so a lot of things were going on and it was really crazy till you know people started questioning this whole movement and it was in the guise of apostolic movement right uh, so even people strong people like Derek Prince pulled out of it and said I have nothing to do with this you know so uh, when there is a strong leadership if we are not careful to go by the standards of God's word, that authority can be abused. So that's a problem with the apostolic you know, way of doing things. So believers have to be very well informed and careful. Then uh, in some apostolic movements, what happens, you know, you have leaders like the one that I just described, uh, where one man or, you know, the main people, they become everything. Oh, the pastoral team. Oh, the, the apostolic leader. He's our leader. He's the father. You know, so getting a lot of attention and exalting a man above God, that's also a danger that could take place. Because you see, the features of an apostolic leader are like that. Very, you know, very dynamic, very attractive. Uh, but we should be careful to exalt God. We should be careful to you know, be humble in the sight of God. So too much focus on one man is a danger that could take place. And one uh, man's doctrinal error. So if you go back to times like, you know, uh, Charles Peram, many of you know uh, all these stories from the past. Um, so there, there were people who went into error. They started out well, but you know, there was too much of focus uh, on one pet doctrine and all. And, you know, there were people even, uh, I think, at the time of uh, John G. Lake and all that. Uh, I think Charles Paran was his name or Bran Branham. Yeah. So, well, the, um, there was a teaching where the person said that I am Elijah. Okay. Uh, so crazy things because they went so far away from the written word of God. So, you, we must be aligned to the word. Otherwise, people can come up with crazy doctrine. And, uh, uh, you know, simple believers, though, those who don't know the word, they start believing these things and it destroys their life. So uh, doctrinal errors is, is another challenge because in an apostolic setup, it can spread fast. 
because you have a strong leadership, you have a good network, it just flows fast, the wrong doctrine, and it affects people's lives. Then apostles, you know, humility is very important in the apostolic setup because uh, uh, otherwise, because of the strong features that the apostolic leader has and the ministry has, you know, they might mm, uh, sort of not give in to accountability. They'll be like, why should I answer anyone? Because God is working through me. God is working through my life. You know, I don't have anybody above me. So uh, humility is the key. If there's no humility in an apostolic leader or an apostolic movement, sooner or later you would find that, you know, it won't last. Uh, so these are the dangers of the apostolic ministry. So coming to Divya's question here, what are some examples? So it's a little challenging, Divya, uh, to actually uh, tell you by observation. But in the past, there have been movements such as, uh, you know, and I'm just sharing these also from uh, the internet. You've had names like uh, Bill Hammond, uh, Peter Wagner, who have given a lot of thrust to the apostolic movement. John Eckhart, you know, these are all people who uh, have written about the apostolic and have published things about uh, the apostolic. And it's brought a lot of good understanding in the body of Christ. And after that, certain networks began, uh, like, you know, I have said Vineyard. You know, if you look at Vineyard, the set of churches of Vineyard, uh, then you had um, uh, Calvary Chapel, right? So Calvary Chapel was another one that uh, sort of became very famous. Jesus move, Movement also, you know, charismatic renewal uh, of, of uh, the, the times past. That also is something that people look at. Uh, then there are a lot of networks that exist that follow the this whole apostolic pattern of going into new nations finding new territory so some names would be like antioch network of churches uh, i also told us about new frontiers which has some branches here in in uh, india uh, then you have uh, apostolic missions international uh, so you know there are there are so many such um, uh, organizations and networks that you can look at and say yes they're all doing apostolic work there are many emerging ones today right across the globe uh, which we may not have heard much about but yes it's it's uh, quite ram like it's it's picking up this whole anointing of uh, being apostolic so these are some names that you know i can share with you about uh, but uh, Personally, for me, noting the journey of a so-called apostolic church, um, uh, I I haven't followed, uh, you know, a, a, an apostolic like another church. But I feel I know that APC is apostolic, right? It's, and I know that that's the direction we are we are heading in. So we are an apostolic church, um, and we are in those stages of uh, apostolic growth. Uh, uh, All people's church, yeah. I would say that. So uh, it, does that help or do you want more examples? Uh, yeah, Yes, Pastor, it helps. Uh, I just also wanted to know is, uh, are you, uh, is it something like uh, what we hear, uh, new apostolic yeah. information? <laughs> yes, yes, okay. yes. Uh, so the thing is, Divya, uh, see, even this new apostolic uh, reformation, right, it's, it's something that was put together uh, once you had uh, a parent, I don't know which year, uh, yeah, again, 1990s, there was um, something known as the Kansas City Prophets. So some of the prophets came together, popular people like, uh, you know, um, Mike Bickle, Bob Jones, Bill Hammond, uh, um, Paul Kane. Uh, John Paul Jackson. So these were all people quite familiar for some of you would know all these names. So they all came together. Then eventually, uh, you know, they had something known as the Apostolic Roundtable uh, with, with some of these uh, people and other people. And then was the emergence of uh, what is known as New Apostolic Reformation. And today, uh, it is said that people like Bill Johnson, they, they are all associated uh, with the new apostolic reformation. So, you know, we are aware of, of these organizations. Uh, and yes, they claim to they claim to have an apostolic outlook. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, Pastor. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to confirm. Yeah. So I am not. I am not commenting much about these people and even the names that I pointed out. I'm not commenting much because I don't uh, know in detail of the way their work has taken off. You know. Remember, we said how do we judge the apostolic on the basis of the outcome. So yes, people say we have this organization, new apostolic reformation and movement, and this and that. Um, yeah, but the impact is what should talk. Okay. Yeah. 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 I was also uh, yeah reading about it. Uh, yeah, but there are people on different uh, standpoints Correct. for some of the uh, some of the doctrines that yes. they hold on. Yeah. Yes. 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 I was also getting okay a little uh, okay where 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 which is the right yeah yeah right yeah. way to it yeah Correct, Divya. See, so that's why every year, like whenever I teach on the apostolic uh, uh, ministry and I have to give you all names. Okay, give me the name of an apostle or an apostolic ministry. It's not that easy because while there are good things that are happening, there are also noticeable excesses and errors. So, you know, to kind of just back up a so-called, uh, you know, a person who calls themselves an apostle or a ministry that calls itself an apostolic ministry. It's tricky <laughs> because if, if, you know, I, I sit here and I tell you, yeah, this and this, then I am backing it up. You know what I mean? But I'm not sure yeah, yeah. what they're well, up to. Yeah, that's, yeah, got, got it. <laughs> yeah, Thank so that's how it, it works. Okay, all right. Thank you, Divya. Thank you for that. Yeah, any other comments? Anything that you all want to talk about? This is the last class, so <laughs> you can make use of your opportunity. But I, I trust that you have an idea, right? So from here to build on your understanding of the apostolic. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, okay, excellent, yeah. excellent. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, Divya. Um, yeah, thank you, everyone. I truly appreciate us journeying together uh, and so glad that uh, all of you have persevered. You've been part of your first year courses and now the second year courses. And I can only pray that God stirs you up and uh, be more than happy to see you in the next, uh, uh, you know, upcoming year. So uh, if, if it's possible, please, um, you know, please continue your studies and those of you um, who are in India and you can easily join our online, uh, our on-campus classes, I would strongly recommend if that is a possibility for you, then please come by, be a part of our on-campus courses, encourage others to register as well. Uh, I, I believe that, uh, you know, God's up to something <laughs> through the Bible College and the ministry of the Bible College here. So uh, thank you once again. I appreciate each of you uh, and uh, I thank God for each of you. And I believe that God is uh, equipping you, grooming you uh, to do great things in, in the kingdom. So God bless you abundantly. Uh, and I'm just going to pray and close. Uh, your uh, assignment will be posted today. And you have about a week and a half to complete it. It's a fairly simple assignment, which you will notice. Um, so all the best. Do well in your assignments. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that uh, you are helping us understand your word and be established in it, O oh God. And Father, I just pray for uh, our batch here and, Lord, each one who is a part of, uh, Lord, this, this batch. And, Lord, even those who are um, listening to uh, these sessions, Holy Spirit, we pray that you will grant us clarity of thought. Uh, you will help us, O oh God, have a, a, a a right vision so that 
Lord, we can step out, Lord, and we can be an apostolic people, Lord, uh, entering new territory, releasing the power of God, uh, Lord, uh, in and through our lives, and God, uh, living by the standards of your word, God, and bringing honor to your name, Father God, and impacting, oh God, not just people around us, but Lord, cities and nations for the glory of your name. Father God, I speak your blessing upon each student. I speak your blessing upon their health, upon their family, upon their ministries, Lord, upon their, uh, oh God, um, uh, uh, Lord, uh, their finances. Father God, everything that concerns them, Father God, thank you that you're a God who will perfect it, Lord. I, I commit them into your hands, Lord, and I pray that each one will be raised up, oh God, strong in the word, strong in the spirit, and Lord, be an influencer, a mover and shaker where you have positioned them, God. Lord, we give you thanks, Lord. We give you praise for the work of Jesus on the cross that, Lord, we are able to experience redemption. We're able to walk in uh, all these exciting things, Lord, that you have for us in your kingdom. We bless you, Lord. We honor you. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, thank you. God bless you, everybody. Thank you. I see the uh, thank you notes here in the chat as well. Uh, yeah, I'm so blessed. And thank you for your encouragement. Do keep me in your prayers. Okay, so uh, yes, God bless you, everyone. Take care. Uh, and uh, yeah, look forward to uh, seeing you graduate if you are graduating this year or uh, seeing you in the upcoming semesters. Feel free, you can uh, post notes on the stream page, email me so we can still keep in touch. Okay, so uh, bye for now uh, and uh, take care. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Man. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank brother. You. God bless you.